right, so we'll go ahead and get started today. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Happy uh, Monday afternoon to you all. Uh, we're going to continue in a little kind of combination of both Rhino and V-Ray today. And you'll notice that on our exercise for today, I've actually kind of combined two. So I've taken exercise uh, 214 and 215 and put them into one exercise. And I'm doing this because I found over time that um, these two things are a little bit shorter each. And by the time we combine them together, uh, we end up with an extra day later on, which will be really useful when we're starting to work on our, um, our final project for the semester. So that's definitely coming up and uh, I can kind of build in a little bit of extra time for you guys to work later on by combining these together. So um, we're going to go ahead and combine those together today. That means I have to move a little bit quicker as I go through lecture, but at the same time, I think it's very, very achievable. Uh, a couple things to point out. Uh, I have exercise 215, uh, 214, 215 open. We will need a particular file. It's this download the SF downtown, downtown.3dm file. Uh, and I believe that when I click on it, it takes us to Dropbox. No, it doesn't. Let's see. That's good. It is direct in um, Canvas. That's good. Um, so it's a little bit larger file, so you probably want to do that in advance, especially if your internet isn't working that well. Remember, you'll right click and say save link as, and we'll save it. Uh, let me get into my um, folder for today. And we'll go ahead and save it as SF downtown. Let me add a fall of 2022 to it. Go ahead and click on save. And if it doesn't download for you, you may have to choose keep because of that security warning, but it looks like it did download, so that's good. Uh, and I'll have that for a little bit later on. We won't need that this until we're down at part four, but it's nice to do that kind of in advance. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Rhino. And I'm gonna start with the brand new Rhino file. There we go. And I'm going to use the large object inches template. It looks like I didn't quite get to uh, click on it. So let me clean up the V-Ray settings here. And there we are. Let's make that big. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new document. So I'll go to file and then new. And we want to make sure that we're choosing the large object inches template. There it is. And we'll go ahead and say open. And that gives us our large object inches template. We're in inches as our default unit. And now we can go ahead and start working on it. So what we're going to be building is some preliminary skyscrapers. And so we're going to use some basic sizes to get our, our, um, our overall layout correct. If we jump back over here, you can see what our sizes are. We're going to do 36 floors. Uh, the, the floor to ceiling height is gonna be 10 feet. Um, don't I have it in here? There we go. I knew I had it written down here. So our overall size is going to be 200 feet by 100 feet with a height of 600 feet, okay? So when we start to set that up, I'm gonna use just the plain box corner to corner tool to establish our beginning here. So we'll start at point zero comma zero. And I'm going to say at 100, feet comma 200 feet. And that gives us the base for our, our skyscraper. And then our height is going to be at 600 feet. So in its most simple form, that is the height and size of our skyscraper. Let's switch this over into shaded mode so you can kind of see it there. And there it is. So what we're working on today is kind of general form. So thus far, everything that we've created has kind of started and we've, we've started with a plan and we've done some building blocks and we've worked through how do we create it. Today, we're looking at a much larger scale object, but we're starting to think about what does this look like on the whole? So this is a very basic setup, obviously. We could create something kind of similar to this. And this is what I'm asking you to do. We're gonna do an iterative process where we keep designing here. Let's say that I take this object, let me copy it over. Let me turn on my endpoint snap here. And we'll copy it over. We'll move here maybe by 300 feet. And then let's say that I'll shrink this. Let me do a scale 1D 
And we'll shrink this. Let me turn on my midpoint here. So we'll say that instead of this being um, the full height, we'll do that. And then let's go ahead and let's copy it again. And we'll stick this here. Let's scale this piece. Again, scale 1D. So I'm scaling in only one direction. Oops. Helps if I can type. There it is. Maybe. Come on. We'll drop that down a little bit. Then I'm going to scale this in 1D. Let's go right there. And then we'll make a copy of this piece and we'll put it on the other side. Let me turn on perpendicular snap so we can move it over there. So I'm starting to build up you know, what this might look like. Now, maybe I'll drop these two down so that they're got a little bit of a, so let's do a this, let's do a scale 1D and we could drop those down. Uh, let's see, let's do 580, I'm just making it up. So we could create a building that looks more like that. So we're kind of evolving the building as we go. Now, we can, of course, build a building out of these, these component pieces, or we could start with a rectangle, for example. Let's go over here by 500 feet. There it is, at 100 feet, comma, 200 feet. And that's just a rectangle. I could then take this and move it up. So I could say copy. V for vertical, and let's move it up halfway. So we'll go up by uh, 300 feet, and then we'll go all the way up by 600 feet. And then I could manipulate this middle one. So I could, for example, let's do a rotate, and we could rotate that by, I don't know, uh, let's say 15 degrees. We could take all three of those and then we could loft them like that. We want to make sure that our corners match up. I'm going to change this seam back over to that corner. And then we can go ahead and say enter. And that starts to build that shape. So that's with control objects, but we can also start with this original object and transform it. So let's go through that process. I'm going to copy this over. There it is. And so what I can do is I can do something called a cage edit to this particular shape. So that's available under the uh, edit. I think it's under edit. I always type it in. Maybe it's under transform. Yeah, transform, cage editing. We're going to go to cage edit. You can create a cage separate from the cage edit. If you just initiate the cage edit command, you'll be creating a cage as you go. So we want to select a control object. We're going to use a bounding box. So it's just a box that goes around our object. And our coordinate system, we can use the world coordinates. And then here we get cage parameters. So this is the number of points in the x, y, and z direction. So the number of points in the x direction, we just want two. So I'll type in two. The number of points in the y direction, we also just want two. And the number of points in the z direction, I'm going to start with three. That's going to divide our shape in the middle. Okay. Then we'll also see here that we have some, what's called an x degree, a y degree, and a z degree. So the x degree being one, one is going to keep us in a straight line. The same is for the y. The z is also going to keep us in a straight line, but it's in two directions at once. So this one's a hard one to describe verbally. So when I actually do it, it'll make more sections. I can't even talk. It will make more sense. So we're going to leave the Z degree at two. Now, when I go ahead and hit enter, you'll see that I will create, yeah, well, editing global there. It's going to create control points on our object. So if I were to take these points, and I were to rotate them, for example, we'll do the same 15 degree rotate. I'm gonna pick that point back there. Let me snap to point. There we go. 
and we'll say rotate by 15 degrees. It's going to be creating that shape for me. So it's very similar to the loft that I created here. Now, what if instead of having this smooth arc, I wanted this to be a straight line segment? Well, remember we talked about that X degree. Let's take this, copy it again. Whoops. There it is. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to give myself an extra one. There it is. Let's do that cage again. So I'll go up to my transform cage editing, um, cage edit. You could also type cage edit into the command line. We're going to do a bounding box. We're going to do the world coordinates. This is already set up at two, two, and three, but we're going to change the Z degree to one. All the other options are the same. We'll hit enter, region to edit global, enter. There we go. Now, if I were to take these points, again, I'm only taking those lower points and rotate them. Again, I'm using the same 15 degrees here. You'll see that instead of being a smooth transformation, it gives us a kink where we've got straight segments as part of the building. Now, what about you say, if I did it with a degree of three? Now, this one, we're going to need to add some control points so you can see it. So let's go back to the cage edit. And we'll do a bounding box again. It'll be the world coordinates. Now, in the um, X point count, the Y point count, and the, the Z point count is three. If I were to change the Z degree to three, it's going to change the Z point count to four. So it needs more points. For ease of kind of exploring this, however, I'm also going to change the Y point count to three and the X point count to three. Now, when I do that, it gives me the opportunity on the X degree and the Y degree to change those to two. Okay, so now I have three, three, and four, two, two, and three on my degrees. When I go ahead and hit enter, yep, global here, you'll see that I've added a control point on the side. I've added this point. The difference here is that now I can manipulate these control points as well. So when I do that and I type in move, for example, you'll see this side start to bulge out. See that bulge out on the side? So this is and can be a very attractive strategy. However, if we were actually trying to build this as a real object, this kind of double curvature is incredibly difficult to manufacture. So most buildings use what are called ruled surfaces. So this three-dimensional curvature, which means it's curving both in the X direction and the Y direction, are very difficult to build in reality. So they will instead approximate them using curving line segments like this, where it is always a straight line. Even though this curves right there, you can always draw a straight line from any point on this side straight across to a point on this side. So that lets you build it up of straight members. It's just the twisting slowly of one to the other that lets us have that curve. So for the purposes of what we're doing, I like to introduce this as a concept. And you could certainly do it. You could 3D print this object, but you wouldn't be able to unroll surfaces on this object and create individual flat panes that could be glued together. So we're going to try to stick away from this unless you want to simplify it. And you can do an approximation of something like this by taking this. There it is. And we could instead keep this in either two dimensions, or we could just build this up so that we had a third like pop out, so to speak. So actually, the, the easier strategy may be to come back to the one where we created the three independent little pieces here. Let's take those. Let's copy them back to here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and we'll rotate this back rotate it's going to be minus 15 degrees there we go so what i could do is i could change this shape right here okay so let's explode this and let's take this shape 
And we can do one of two things. One, we could just simply draw a new piece with an angle, something like that, for the side. Or I could take this existing piece, I could type rebuild, and we could rebuild it with a point count of three. Degree, if I wanted it to be a sharp point, I would do a degree of one. Say OK. Then I could take this control point, we could move it out by 15 feet, for example, and create that little piece. So th that was a degree of one. If we wanted to do a degree of two, right, I could do a um, Let me rebuild this again. We're going to do it with three points, but we're going to do a degree of two. We'll go ahead and say OK. And watch when I move this, it's going to move as an arc instead. Just a different strategy. I'm going to go back here. We're going to rebuild it as a degree of one. So I can do that point on the side. So let's go back to a degree of one. We'll take this, we'll move it out by, let's go 20 feet this time. There it is. And so what I can do to kind of help you visualize this is I could draw, a, I just lost my mouse. Hold on a second, come on. Come on, reconnect. You go dead. Huh, my mouse went dead. That's pleasant. Um, I could do this to help you kind of visualize. And again, I apologize. Now I'm using a trackpad, so it's going to get more challenging here. See, I'm creating this as kind of a, a, a guy, just so you can see the profile of the building. So let's take that piece right here. Let's join those together. Now, if I were to take this, this, and this and loft them together, I may not get exactly what I'm after. So that edge is the same. Let's go ahead and take a look. And there we go. It worked out OK. So it's similar to this shape here. The difference is that there are straight line segments from here to here. It's not bulging in two directions. This has a, a bulge that goes this way and a bulge that goes this way. This one has a bulge that goes this way, but it's straight line segments going this direction. So it's just a subtle difference. So as we start to develop this, right, we could even take this object. Let me take them all here. And let me go ahead and copy that. Oops, should have been 1,800 feet. There it is. And I could transform this one. So I could take those three objects there, and I could do a cage edit on those. So this is fundamentally about exploring form, right? So let me go to transform cage editing. Let's go ahead and create a cage edit. There it is. We're gonna do a bounding box again. We're gonna do the world. Um, I'm gonna change this back down to two. So the two and this one. Yeah, we can leave it at four, that's fine. Okay, we'll hit enter. Our global, yes, enter. OK, then we're going to let's do a little bit of a rotation. So I'll take that first set there, and we'll rotate this by maybe only five degrees. Then I'll take this lower section there, and I'll rotate this at maybe negative five degrees. So I get just a little bit of a sway in that building versus all the rest of these. Once I've decided that I kind of like a particular building, so in this case, I like this end building. I'm happy with it. This is the one that I want to pursue. I would take this object. Let me hit escape a couple times there. I would take this object. Whoops. Sorry. Select the whole thing. Make sure I get it all. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it onto an entirely new file. So I'm going to go up to edit and then copy. That's a copy clip copy the clipboard rather than a transform copy. And then I'll go ahead and open a new Rhino. So let's minimize this right now. Minimize this, let's open Rhino. 
Again, we'll do a large object inches. Clean up V-Ray. Make that big. There it is. And I'll go on to edit and then paste. And that gives me my overall building. Let's do a zoom selected so I can see it. And then let's take this object and let's move it to 0 0.00. zero. I'll we'll type move and we'll go to zero comma zero like that. Zoom selected. And let's go ahead and look at it shaded. And there we are. So this would be the skin of my final building right there. What we need to start to do is we need to start to build this into a building where we have floors. And those are going to be both the floor that you walk on and the ceiling below. And so there's usually a space, there's a cavity between those two. So you have to kind of manipulate those and work with those. So let's start to get organized on my layers here. All right, so the skin here is the default layer. So let's just rename that to skin. I'm going to make a check mark here for my layer one, and let's call this floor or floors. What I'll do then is I'm going to draw, let me zoom out here. Uh, zoom select, there we go. I'm going to draw a surface. So this would be a rectangular plane corner to corner. And I wanna draw that so that it is larger than my whole building like that. And I'm doing that in the top view so that I can make sure that I'm larger than my whole building. Now, that would be the ground. The, my first floor, I'm gonna start at 24 feet above the ground level. So let's go ahead and type move, V for vertical, and we'll go up by 24 feet. And there it is. Now I need to copy this multiple times to create every floor. So from here on up, our floor to floor is gonna be every 16 feet. So the easiest method for doing this is actually to go ahead and do an array. So I'm gonna type in array and I'll hit enter. And this is going to be number in the X direction. We went through this before is one, number in the Y direction is one, and number in the Z direction is gonna be 36. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. Then it's gonna ask me for the Z spacing. So we talked about this, the Z spacing here is going to be 12 feet. And sorry, the Z spacing is not 12 feet, it is 16 feet. So let's go back to Z spacing, it should be 16 feet. There we go. And once I like it, it's showing me kind of a preview of it, I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And that's then going to give me all of the floors of the building. Now I need all of the ceilings to be installed. Well, I know that these floors are gonna have a ceiling that's down by four feet. So I have two options. One, I could select all of the floors, right like that. Oops, sorry, I have to rotate a little bit so I can do a better selection there. I only want the floors, there we go. And I could do a copy, V for vertical, and we could say these should all be at negative four feet. And that would then create the, the bottom floors. The alternative to that, there they all are, is that I could just copy the first one and do another array. So let's take that first one. I'm going to copy it. We'll do a V for vertical. We'll go negative four feet. There it is. And let's go ahead, before we make the array, let's go ahead and take that. Right, oh, right. Okay, okay, I have to zoom in. This no mouse thing is killing me today. There it is. Let's go ahead and put it onto layer two. I'm gonna right click and say change object layer. And we will call this one ceiling. I'll hit enter. Then we will right click and say change object layer. There it is. Then we'll do an array if I can type array, there it is. Same thing, number in the X direction, number in the Y direction, yep. Number in the Z direction, 36. My spacing is exactly the same. So this would be, uh, sorry, I have to set a point and then it would be 16 feet. And we're going up 
There it is. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. And that then gives me the ceilings of every one of those floors. So I have the ground and I have the ceilings. So let's select them all. We'll zoom selected. There it is. And now, because these floors extend past the building, I need to trim them out. So let's go back to our skin. And I think I can do this best in the top layer. Go ahead and change this into shaded mode so you can see it a little bit better. There it is. And what I need to do is I need to, actually, I'm going to use ghosted here. I need to select the skin of the building. So there, there, and there. Alternatively, I could go up to the skin layer. I could right click and say select objects to get all of them. Then I'll go ahead and type in trim. And again, I think this is easiest to do in the top layer. All I need to do is actually select all these floors and let it trim. You could also do it in the perspective view, kind of a chunk at a time. So I could take a few of these off like that. And you can see that as I start to do it, it's cutting out the building with all these floors. So there's nothing wrong with doing it all in one shot. But sometimes if like the computer is going to crash or something like that, it's easier to do it in little segments. So be aware. OK, uh, it looks like I do need one more ceiling at the very top. I forgot to put that one in, um, but we'll, we'll survive for right now. I'm going to go ahead and click off here so that nothing's selected. You can kind of get a sense. It looks like I have a floor, this purple right there, which of course it's not going to let me select, that's coplanar with the top right there. So that may be problematic long term. So I may end up trimming that with the larger square so that I eliminate it on the sides here. So let's go ahead and trim. And we'll get rid of that side. Oh, come on. Let me select it again. Let's go to trim. There it is. There it is. So I just trimmed that out. That just kind of cleans things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and zoom selected. And there's my building again. So I have the skin, I have the floors, and I have the ceilings. The next piece of a, of a building is that we have some kind of a core that goes up through the building. It's usually at least 30 feet by 30 feet. So I'd go ahead and draw, and I think it's easiest to do a box here, a box that's at 30 feet comma 30 feet and we need to be up at least 600 feet i'm going to do it at 610 so it's 10 feet taller than the building as a whole let's go ahead and put that on layer three and we will call this one core there it is i need to move that over into the center of my building so i'm going to go ahead and type in move I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to turn off. I'm going to disable all my snaps so I don't accidentally snap to the wrong thing. And we'll place my core. Oops, sorry. I should have done this at the bottom here. Turn back on those snaps. There we go. Now we'll disable the snaps. Just want to make sure it's at the right height. There it is. So we'll place it in our building. That looks like a good place for the core right there. And now we need to actually trim that out. So let me double click on perspective here. We need to trim out what's happening where all the floors go through. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna explode this core for just a second. I'll take the top, the very top there and I'm gonna type hide. Oops, that'll just make the top go away. This then will allow me to select the core. So let me select objects. I'm right clicking on the layer. And then I can actually trim it. Now I can do this in the perspective view. If I rotate here and look down on my object, sometimes that's easy. I could also do it in the top view. I'm going to type in trim. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start clicking on my objects. And you'll see that as I click on it, it'll keep working its way down the building. And so this is the same as the number of floors. So I'm going to end up typing, clicking uh, 36 times for all of the floors and 36 times for all of the ceilings as I work my way through. And you can see that that core is starting to become kind of an empty void as we're zooming 
as we're going down. All right, and then we made it all the way to the bottom. So I now have, oops, what? That was a waste of time. I can clicked too fast. Choose, can you just choose the ceiling and the floors from the layers? No, because you have to be able to determine where it's going to be. What I could do instead is I can do it in the top view like this. And when I type trim, let me switch this. I need this to be in wireframe mode. I can actually just go ahead and select all at once. And it'll trim them all. There it is. And I can go ahead and press enter to be done. Like that. And so it, doing it is far more efficient in the top view than clicking on all of them. Um, so that's but just another the button. What? You need you don't need to trim the, the bottom, the, the No, the, the bottom can the floor can exist on the very bottom. It it won't, it it's just the ground. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and I'm gonna type in show to get back the top here. And there we are. Oops, sorry about that. Again, I'm working with my mouse here. Let's zoom select it. So what we have is we have our building and it's now time to conceive of our building in a rendering format. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'll go to file and then save. And I'm gonna put it in our folder for today. Uh, and let's go ahead and call this uh, skyscraper fall of 2022. And we'll go ahead and click on save. So this is where that file that I had previously downloaded becomes important. So let's go ahead and look for that file. I put it in our folder here. It was the SF downtown fall of 2022. There it is. And I'm gonna double click on that file and open that one up. Like so. Let's make that large. Let's adjust our We'll adjust our um, V right here. And so what this file is, let me, I'm gonna type zoom all, I hope, extent, sorry, zoom extents. There it is. So what this is, is this is a file that is uh, kind of an, it's actually pretty old at this point. It was built by uh, some of the grad students at UC Berkeley, uh, and it's designed to be a rough model of the city of San Francisco. So it does have some familiar landmarks. If I were to zoom in here a little bit, we'd see some familiar landmarks. There's the Embarcadero buildings, et cetera. Um, there's the Transamerica building, but it does not have um, like the new Salesforce tower in it. So it's, it's a bit older. There's the ferry building. Um, this is not the ideal format. This is actually a mesh file that was generated. So it's not as good as a NURBS surface, but it is sufficient for what we're trying to do. Our renderings of this skyscraper are not going to be against a photorealistic background. So we're not looking at photorealistic buildings around our building. We're instead going to kind of abstract us into just a white massing model for the rest of the buildings, which allows us to focus on the rendering of our building in its kind of general massing context rather than as a whole. So in order to make this a little bit easier for you, I've identified a site already. It's right there in blue. And I've also given you kind of a foundation to stick your building on. So we've got this piece here that's in blue. I can select it right now. Let me go to zoom selected so we can zoom in on it. There it is. This is kind of the foundation for you. So it's set up so that it's easy for you to place your object into this scene. So we would go to our file or yeah, file and then um, insert or edit blocks, insert block instance. We're gonna browse for that skyscraper file that I just created. All right, it was the skyscraper fall of 2022, there it is. We'll go ahead and say open. We're gonna do a linked reference for our block definition type and layer style. I'll go ahead and say, okay. We'll go ahead and say, okay, again. 
and then we'll be able to put our building into the scene. Let me turn on my end snap so I can snap it right there to that. Notice that our building is not oriented correctly, so I'm still gonna have to do a rotate. It's just a regular rotate. And in order to do that, I'm gonna rotate around here. I'm gonna snap along that side and I'm gonna snap that to our foundation, right like that. So now our building is inserted into the scene. Let me hit escape here for a second. There it is. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna to go to file and then save now that our building's in the scene. Perfect. So we need to start to set this up for rendering. So there's kind of two parts. One, we have no materials on our building yet. And two, we have no materials in our scene here yet. So this is where we have to pay attention to where these files are. So first off, I'll jump back into our skyscraper model and I'll start to assign materials here. So let me go ahead and open my V-Ray asset editor. Oh, I have to set V-Ray as my current render. Sorry about that. And then we'll open the V-Ray asset editor and we're gonna look for our materials. I'm gonna do a concrete for my floor. So let's do, well, maybe I'll do it for my ceiling too. All right, here's a concrete floor. That one looks pretty good. I'm gonna right click on it and say, add to scene. Then once it's on my scene, I'll right click on it and I'm gonna say, add to layer. And it's gonna go on to the floor layer. Then I'll come down here, I have concrete ceiling. So let's go ahead and pick the concrete ceiling. I'll right click, I'll add to scene. And then I'll go ahead and right click on the material and apply to layer. We'll put it on the ceilings. Oops, I don't think that actually took apply to layer ceiling. There it is. So I have two materials applied, a floor and a ceiling. I still need a material for the core. So we could pick a different one here. We'll do this concrete simple. Let me add to the scene. And we'll go to right click. I'll say apply to layer and this is going to be the core. And then our last bit is the skin. And so the skin is actually a little bit more challenging than it looks. The skin, generally people want some kind of a reflective um, skyscraper glass. A lot of the glass that's available here doesn't really do what we're after. We could of course use it. So you could use this glass coated black, for example, and we could try it out and see if it looks good. Uh, I also, however, do have some skyscraper glass materials that I've created that I think work a little bit better. The challenge with those is they do require a little bit of texture mapping um, and we'll spend a lot more time next class going over how to texture map them. So for right now, I think I'll probably end up just using the skyscraper glass um, or just a, a standard glass from V-Ray, but I wanna point these out. There's a dark skyscraper glass and a light skyscraper glass, depending on what you're looking for. Next class, I will install that on this so that we can kind of see it and I'll go through the texture mapping of it. It's there if you want it <clears throat> for today but it's not gonna be required for today. So let me come back in here. I'm gonna use this glass coated black. I'm gonna right click and say, add to scene. And then I'll right click on it and say, apply to layer. And it's gonna go on the skin layer. So we'll come down here to skin. There we go. So now it's on the skin layer. So at this point, this is fairly ready. Let me go ahead and save it. I'll go to file and then save. All right, then we need to update it. So let me jump over into our scene here and I'm gonna to go to edit, blocks, and then block manager. And then you can see that it says linked file is newer. I need to go ahead and update that piece. Perfect. Block updated successfully. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And there it is. So now my material has been applied to my building. So we're ready to render there, but I don't have a material on the, um, the kind of the generic background here, all of these other little objects. So let's go into my V-Ray here. Oh, it's not my active render. Let's go to render, current render V-Ray for Rhino. Let's open that asset editor again. 
maybe. Come on, there it is. And so in this scenario, sometimes we just want kind of a generic white material. So this porcelain white actually works pretty well. You'll see that it's already been loaded in here. Uh, we could right click on it and say, add to scene. There it is. And I want to take that and I want to apply it to this object. So if we look at our layers here, we have our SF model and our building footprint. Let's apply it to the SF model layer. I'll right click and say, apply to layer, SF model. There it is. So now we have those pieces set up. I do have a couple views pre-set up to help you kind of with your renderings. So if you look in here, I'm clicking where it says perspective 02. I'm clicking the little down arrow and I'm going to set view. Notice that there is perspective one and perspective two pre-set up. These are street level views of our building. So there's one. If I go to set view, we can go to perspective two. It's just a different view of our building down at street level. Okay, so I have those established. Let's go ahead and save this file again. I'll go to file and then save. So the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to add today, and like I said, today we're mixing both some Rhino and some V-Ray. So the last piece of the puzzle that I'm going to add, if I pull this up here, is that we actually want to install a sun. So this is the first time that we're not doing our generic default directional light. We're going to actually set a place and a time of day. So let's come back here. And we're going to do that using the sun creation panel. So we'll come up to our V-Ray lightings and we'll come all the way to the, almost the end. So we've used the directional light so far. This time we're going to use this sun creation panel, this one. It's right next to it. Let me go ahead and click on it and it'll bring up a dialog box that call, that's called the sun angle calculator. And in this box, this is where we can actually set things up. So it's currently set in Ghana. We need to adjust that for San Francisco. So let's look under search here. We'll type in San Francisco, Francisco, there it is. We'll select that as our location. Then I'll scroll back up here and we need to set a particular time of day and a time of year. So I like a little bit earlier in the morning or a little bit later in the afternoon. So we have a little bit longer shadows. Let's do it a little bit later in the afternoon, maybe like that. Notice that we can also pick a time of year. It's set currently to where we are because we're here in October, uh, but we could adjust the date and that's gonna adjust the overall sun angle. Once all of that's set, okay, we can go ahead and say, okay. And then it's gonna ask us to position the sun. I like to position the sun somewhere near the building. So it's really obvious. So I'll put it down at that corner and you'll see that there is our sun. It looks just like a directional light. Its settings, however, are very, very different. So with it selected, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. We'll call this layer environment. And then I'll go ahead and add a, a sub layer for sun. And I'm going to change the sun onto that layer. So I'm going to right click and say change object layer. And now it's on its own sun layer. I always find it useful to put it on its own sun layer. So now I have an actual time of day and a sun installed. If I were to render this, it would end up being too washed out or too dark because I haven't adjusted settings for that sun. So let me go ahead into my settings. We're going to look at our camera settings. And this is where that exposure value matters. Right now, the exposure value is set at 14. It's not too bad. It may need to drop down a little bit. Let's go to maybe 13. And we'll take a look. This, however, is not quite complete. If I were to do a rendering, and let's actually do that. Let's do a test rendering. Now, when I'm doing the test rendering here, I'm going to change my render output to be smaller, just so I can get a, a glimpse of, is, are things kind of turning out? So let's go a width of maybe 400 by 225. It's really small. And let's go ahead and do a quick render and have a look at what's happening here. We've got to give it a second to, to start here.
All right, so we're rendering. I'm not seeing my glass skyscraper yet. I think something might have gone wrong in the material. So we'll have to come back and revisit that. However, I can see that the sky is way too dark. And that's because I don't have a sky installed yet. So let's come back to V-Ray. We have our sun, but we don't have our sky. So I'm going to look at the environment tab down here. And under the environment tab, you can see that we currently have kind of a generic background. I'm going to click on this checkerboard. I'm going to right click and say clear. It's going to get rid of my current background. And then I'll go ahead and click on it. And instead of picking a bitmap like we've been doing on our materials, I'm actually going to choose a sky. And then it's going to create an environment sky for me. Let me look at the properties for the sky. We'll come down here. And we need to make sure that our sun is selected to our sunlight, not our default Rhino document sun. We're going to choose our sunlight. There it is. And so now that is tied to the light that we created, our sun. So now that I have those two, when I go and click on render, let me bring up that frame buffer, you're going to see that our sky is going to look a lot more like a traditional sky. It'll be a clear sky. It won't be a cloudy sky. Why is this not coming up? There it is. So pay attention to the sky right now. All right, it's definitely too bright because we, we installed that sky. So let's come back and let's adjust that uh, exposure value. So I'll close this. We'll come back into our settings. We'll come back to our exposure value under camera. There it is. And let's go up to maybe 15. And then we'll go ahead and stop and we'll re-render again. Come on, it's thinking. Okay, so while that's trying to re-render, why does it keep jumping to finished? It's not finished at all. There it is. While that's rendering, I'm gonna go back to my skyscraper here and I wanna confirm that my materials were applied correctly. So I have the materials there listed. Let's go ahead and switch this over into my uh, rendered mode. Okay, looks like all of my materials are applied. I did not do a texture map yet. Realistically, I'm gonna to need to do that, but we'll go ahead and go with it. Let me save it again. Perfect. And let's jump back over here to my blocks. There it is. Yep, that sky is definitely better. Our sun settings are better. I'll show you how to adjust the darkness of that sky too in just a second. So let's go ahead and go up to edit, blocks, block manager. Linked file is newer. Let's go ahead and update that again. Perfect, we'll go ahead and say okay. And let's confirm that it assigned its materials the way it was supposed to. Close this, come on. And look at that, it's not pulling the materials through correctly. That is incredibly annoying. Yeah, I know I can't modify that. Hmm. That appears to be problematic. Uh, so I'm going to have to work on why those are not following through. Let me do. Try to sort this out here. I'm trying to force it into doing it. Let me select the objects here and let me go into my texture mapping. Let's do a bounding box, world, capped, yes. Okay, we're gonna do an X equals Y equals Z. Okay, I know that's not accurate, but I'm trying to do something to force the materials to be updated here. I 
And the other thing I'll do is I'll consider rebringing it in. So let's go to edit blocks, block manager. Let's go ahead and update that one. No, it is conveniently not doing it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebring that in and see if that solves the problem. So let's go ahead and delete this block. And let's go to edit blocks, insert block instance. Make sure we're picking the fall 2022 skyscraper. Linked. And say okay. And we'll drop it right there. Then we need to rotate this. Oops. There we go. Rotate there to there. And it looks like by bringing it back in, I'm already looking up here, looks like the materials actually came through. I'm not quite sure why they didn't the first time, they should have, but we delete it and replace it and now we've got it. I went ahead and saved it. And then let's jump back to our set view. I'll go to set view perspective one. There's my perspective one view. And when we go to render this, you'll see that it's currently rendering exactly what I see on the screen. And we're thinking. What is the purpose of applying material to the floor and ceiling if I'm not supposed to see it? So th that's a great question. It's not really necessary right now, but if we were closer to the building, we might want to render it like an entrance or something. So it's just good habit to be in. Um, if the glass has some transparency to it, we might also be seeing some of the material through the glass, theoretically, if we were closer. Our rendering right now is far enough away to where you're right, it probably doesn't matter. Okay, so it's starting to render out. That's fine. This view doesn't show the sky as well. I'm going to go ahead and stop this render. We'll switch to the other view. Go to set view. Let's go to perspective two. There we go, because we'll see a little bit more of the sky over here. Now, when I go to render, instead of, let me open my V-Ray asset editor. In my settings, right now we're looking under my output. Let's minimize those for a second here. Under render output here, we're doing 400 wide by 225 tall what if we switch those so let's go to custom and let's say instead of my width being 400 let's do a width of 200 and a height let me unchain them so they're not connected together and a height of maybe 800 so this is then going to render not what we see on the page but instead a rendering that's going to show much more of our whole building so let me go ahead and do that And I apologize, this is the nature of doing renderings. We always have to do these weights. So there's just pauses. I guess that means it's time for our caffeine. So you'll see here in my frame buffer that it just got a lot taller. And when it's done compiling here, we're gonna see our whole building in rendered format. So we're rendering narrower and taller to see the whole building. So you can see just a little bit of a hint of where those floors are in the building. So this actually with this dark glass doesn't look too bad in terms of kind of establishing where our, um, what our building looks like. So the sky is still a little bit on the light side. If I wanted to darken that sky, for example, I'd come over here and I can change this background value. So right now it's set to one. If I change it to two, that's gonna make it a little bit darker. I think it goes that direction. So let me stop it and then we'll re-render again. And this is where trial and error happens. That's also why I tend to keep this small to begin with. So you could actually, now that I have my proportions correct, we could drop this all the way down to only 100 wide or 50 wide as we start to do these test renders because we don't need the full resolution yet. We're just trying to get our settings correct. So it's pulling this one back up. There it is.
and there we are. Actually, I think I lightened the sky instead of darkening the sky. Uh, so perhaps this needs to go to 0.5 to darken the sky. I always forget which direction it goes. Anyway, once we have that set and we have our basic rendering set, this is what I'm after for today as part of your exercise. So we're doing something, we have a sun installed, we have sky in the background, and you have a preliminary rendering of your building. Like I said, we'll come back and revisit the material on the skin of the building. This one doesn't look too bad, uh, but I have some, some fine tuning that you could certainly do to get a little bit better results, okay? So this is what we're looking for for a render. And um, I know that we're getting down to kind of the, the part where things start to get more complicated. There's a lot of details in V-Ray, so that's what our check-ins are for. So if you feel like you're getting struck, stuck on a particular thing, don't hesitate to, uh, to come to the check-in and ask me those questions and, and we'll work through whatever the problems are. You do have your uh, assignment 201s due today. So if you have questions on it or you're struggling with something in particular, uh, that's another thing that we can work on for our check-ins. Your 202 is due in a week and a half or so, um, though you've finished exercise 213 by now, I hope. And if you have, you have basically all the components that you need to actually turn in 213. You will turn those in separately though. So you have your exercise 213 and then you have your assignment 202 that you'll be turning in. Assignment 203 is on the way. Uh, we'll look at that next class in a little bit more depth, but lo and behold, we're gonna be working on a skyscraper for that. So no surprise that we're going in that direction, okay? So remember, we do have our check-ins today. So if you have any questions, please stop by uh, and let me know. If that's, I think that's about it. So let's take a few minute break. Uh, let's come back at, uh, let's call it 1230. We'll do a nice round 1230. For those of you that are in your check-ins, um, it gives you a chance to, Grab a quick bite to eat if you want in those 10 minutes before you come back. Um, and I'll let you guys go unless anybody has any questions.